Hey everybody, as always I'm really excited that you were here. Today I am making something I've wanted to do for a long time, which is recreating one of Cecile Barnson's dresses. If you don't know Cecile Barnson's work, they are a couture house, they make these relaxed, timeless, feminine, beautiful pieces. The silhouettes are magical and cloud-like, the fabrications are gorgeous, there are a lot of bows and ties and ruching and and oversized silhouettes and I love it. I just love it. The dress that I'm inspired by today is called the Ilani dress. I believe it retails for about $1,500. So we will see if we can get close to this look on a budget. I spent about $54 at Spotlight. I already have matching thread. I also picked up some matching satin bias tape to do some finishing in. And I got about five meters of this beautiful seafoam fabric. It's, I believe, a polyester and an elastane blend, and it was $8 a meter. A lot of this process for me was just trying to figure out what shapes made up this bodice piece. So I just started with a regular bodice block that I had that fit me well, and then I started playing around with the shape. I knew that it extended all the way down to the end of the skirt hem and then it kind of had this little curve that went up to the side armhole but it took quite a lot of playing and dissecting to figure out the exact proportions of everything. The back was more complicated and this first draft I will spoiler alert you it wasn't correct. Okay that back is absolutely nonsensical so I am gonna practice. <laughs> We're gonna practice. The practice was actually really essential. I ended up drafting on my mannequin and adding some bust darts to my front pattern piece. And then I just had a big play with a twirl so that I could figure out the order of construction, which was kind of breaking my brain at this stage. It was helpful to play though. We're on to something. I think the front looks great. I didn't do the whole thing, but I like how it's fitting at the front. The bow means that it's really tight. The back is like kind of right, I think. I don't think that they actually have this piece of fabric here. I have a feeling the sleeve is floating. So I'm gonna try and fix that. But otherwise, pretty happy, I think. Hesitantly happy. Okay, okay, okay. It's the next day. I did a big play around last night and I think I have done a twirl that makes sense. I did some crazy research last night. I was screenshotting people's reels, like trying to see the underarm of this dress to understand. But basically, I figured out how the sleeve fits in without like a full armhole. Um, my brain is still a little bit fried from it, but I'm excited and I'm going to show you what my pattern pieces look like. It, it took me some fiddling, so it might take you some fiddling if you're making this, but let me show you. So basically you can see my front and my back piece and the back piece is just that top part of the back yoke and then the rest of the back is just made up from ties. Basically the front piece is just a bodice block that fits me really well. It goes in a little bit on a diagonal and I just felt like that means that when you pull it, it looks more flattering. And I've also added a bust dart in the front. Then it just curves down. You can figure out this curve however you like. And then the pattern piece goes all the way to the desired length of the skirt. Hey, it's Editing Carly here. I just realized I totally didn't even show you what my puff sleeve pattern looks like. It's self-drafted. It's really hodgepodge. I will insert a picture of what it looks like roughly here. Feel free to copy if you like. But I'm sorry, I didn't even address it in this video. I'm actually legit a bit scared for this one, but... We have to begin. I'm going to do my best to explain this thoroughly through voiceover because I did actually find it quite a challenging So, but hey, if I can do it, I really believe you can do it too. First, I cut out my pattern pieces from my main fabric and I actually ended up French seaming my seams, so I pinned it wrong sides together, then sewed, then ironed that seam flat and then sewed it again. That's how you do a French seam. And I thought that that would just be a really nice kind of couture finish to my seams, but honestly, it was very extra and you don't have to do it. Once I had done my shoulder seams, then it was time to finish the neckline. So I cut out some bias tape and made that. Then I pinned the center of the length of bias tape to the center of my neckline and sewed that right sides down together. So basically the aim of this game was to finish the neckline but also have two long strands of bias tape hanging off the back of the neckline so that they would be ties. I hope that that makes sense. It was kind of an interesting process, but now that I've done it, I feel like it would be a lot easier the second time around. So 
hopefully it's easy for your too. I sadly am just now realizing that I needed to finish this back edge of the seam before doing these neckties because they're exposed. So I'm gonna have to unpick this, which is fine usually, but this fabric is so slippery and frayy. It's, it's kind of scary to work with. I did a little bit of unpicking and I righted my wrongs and I finished that raw edge of the back off and then reattached that bias tape, giving it a really good press so that it looked lovely. Then I ironed and sewed down the darts for my front part of the bodice. And fun little trick that I learned from Vicky Sew's patterns is not to backstitch at the end of the point of the dart, but just to tie a knot and sew the ends of that into the dart. It just gives it a little bit more of a clean finish. And I think that tip changed my life. Then we've moved on already to the sleeves. I started by just gathering those sleeves up and then pinning them right sides together with my bodice. So we sewed them onto the bodice before sewing them shut, which is not usually the way I do sleeves. So this is challenging guys, but hey, hey, we're making it through. We're making it through. Then I sewed my sleeves. I did do this French seam there. So that's why it's wrong sides together. So don't, don't worry. I got you, I got you. I French seamed those sleeves and then they were looking beautiful. I then sewed my gathering stitches along the bottom part of the sleeve and I did overlock all of the inside of the sleeve because some of it wasn't going to get covered with bias tape. The side of the bodice, the sleeve and then the back and in theory we're just going to finish all of this section with the binding and continue another one of these ties off the edge. Guys, this part broke my brain so much even re-watching it I don't even know how to verbalize what I was doing. So apologies but basically I was just trying to create this second tie at the back of the bodice and it also accomplishes the finishing of the sleeve at the back it's it's weird and crazy and then I just used bias tape to finish the bottom part of my gathered sleeve as well and this part was a lot more normal <laughs> and yet I was still so scared <laughs> looking like at the moment. I think I'm too frustrated with this fabric to be at all happy with this, <laughs> which is so silly. I think it can come together. It's just, I've done some dodgy sewing and I can't unpick it. I think it will actually do the garment so much damage to unpick. Um, maybe I made these sleeves a teeny bit too small. There's just like a few things I'm just learning on this one. I'm like, at this stage, I feel like the next one I make will be good. Not that this is bad, just know I can do better and it's like, oh. Anyway, gotta persist with the back straps. And then it's time for the skirt and then it's done. So it's actually not that far off. This was like a lot of the complicated sewing here, I think. I think, hopefully. The next step was to cut out all of the different lengths and dimensions of ribbons for the back of the bodice. I've cut out two of my waist ties and these panels are about 20 centimeters wide and about one and a half meters long and they will be folded in half right sides together and sewn into a lovely bow tie into a lovely tie and obviously flip right sides out. I've got two of these waist ties and then there are these other straps that run long ways down the back and I've cut out four of these and they are about 10 centimeters by one meter. And I've just eyeballed these, so I'm not sure if they're gonna look good, but just so you know, that's what I've done. But now I'm just going to iron these long strips of fabric right sides together. Then I'm gonna stitch down the short end and all the way down the long end, leaving a small gap so that I can turn it right sides out. Then I'm going to press it. And then you have the option to top stitch if that is something that you like. And now they're ready to attach. Hey, if you've got a better way of attaching straps to a bodice that isn't lined, I would love to know because this kind of feels wrong, but 
Hey, it got the job done. Basically, I attached my straps right sides together to the edge of the bodice where I wanted them. I had overlocked my edge, but really that was just for extra security. And then I re-sewed, top stitched that down so that the seam was encased underneath. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. The front, the back. I just need to do the other straps. <sighs> this just feels like one of those days where it's like nothing feels right, but I don't think anything is particularly wrong. I think it's going fine. It is going fine past Kali and you need to trust the process more. <laughs> I just basically finished off all of my straps the exact same way as those two main straps and then I got to placing them onto my bodice in the different locations. There were two at the top part of the bodice and then there were two on this extra tie that goes around the waist and then I think that was done. And I just secured them all the same way as I did for those two big waist ties. Okay, we're catching last moments of sunset right now. It's quite beautiful. And you know what? I think I'm turning a page. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> You're all probably angry at me for being disappointed, but you know how it be sometimes. Okay, the back is done, I think. Just don't mind how dodgily I've tied all the bows. They're actually really hard to tie by yourself. And now I just have to add the skirt, which is going to be two panels that are really gathered here at the waist, and then they connect at the back. Maybe I'll need to add some elastic here, but otherwise I'm just going to use binding to cover that raw range of the skirt. And then I just hem it. Oh! Um, this shape here is basically just a big rectangle, like a metre and a half, and it just has the same curve as the front of that bodice piece. I already feel like I haven't made my skirt gathered enough, but you all know I'm just a I'm just a sucker for volume. I like voluminous things. And I think that's why I didn't like those sleeves. And I'm nervous about the skirt. But I know I just need to grow up and realize that things don't have to be voluminous to be beautiful. <sighs> I'm gonna French seam my panels together. Then do gathering stitches gather it and attach. I hope it's that straightforward. <laughs> because the fabric met at the back of the dress, I did do a French seam here all the way down, attaching my two skirt panels so that they were now one skirt panel. Make French seam for breakfast. I eat French seam. Yummy. <laughs> And here is a clip of me sewing my gathering stitches along the top edge of my skirt panel, all ready to be gathered up. I was gonna try and film this part, but it's just a big mess of blue fabric. And I just thought it would be easier to explain it than to try and even film this. I'm baffled and I'm doing it. Okay, okay, okay. That's all the shirt. The skirt wraps around and it attaches to this front. So basically what's happening right now is that I have my big skirt panel and it attaches to that front thing right sides together. So right side and then it wraps all the way around and then it attaches right side here. And then the back is going to be just left kind of loose and billowy a little bit and then should be, should be able to cover all of the seam, the waistband seam, with bias tape. And in my head that works, but everything in this process today has just been, like, in theory, that works. Do we know? We don't know. Basically, this skirt construction is just attaching it to the bodice, because that is all the fabric we have to attach it to. So it goes all the way up that curve and to the side of the bodice, and then we leave it unattached at the back, attached to nothing. So that's just what I'm doing in this clip here attaching it to my bodice piece. The skirt is on, but the back is droopy here. And I can't quite figure out how to fix that, whether it needs to be like an elastic or some sort of tie. I have a feeling the dress has ties on it, like tiny little ties. I feel like I just looked at one of my screenshots and caught a glimpse of some tiny ties and I was like, oh, 
how did I not see them? Anyway, tomorrow I will finish. It just needs a hem and, and it needs this to be figured out. We're almost done. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow and hopefully my brain is just working a bit, a bit better. Hey, it's a few days later. I got my hair done. I'm going to try and gather the back portion of this dress, which is going to be left hanging, and finish it with bias binding. I still am not sure, like, maybe I should be putting an elastic in the back, maybe I should be putting ties in the back, but I'm just not really sure what to do. So I'm just going to try gathering it first. Guys, I'm sorry about this video. I feel like I've been all over the place, but... This is real sewing and real problem solving. But hopefully it's helpful in even a tiny, teeny little bit. Let's try and finish this. <laughs> Seems like a good amount of gather, I think. I just had to make sure that I could get in and out of the dress with this level of gather. And I think it's as far as I can gather it while still being able to get in and out. I finished off my skirt seams with some pre-made satin bias tape and I did end up trimming all of the seams just to make it as easy as possible to do this properly. If I'm being honest, the application of this bias tape was something I'm not proud of, but hey, hey, we were getting the job done. Unfortunately, the back of my skirt was a little bit too droopy, so I did end up sewing in some elastic very haphazardly, and that just kind of made the skirt sit a little bit tighter on my waist, which I enjoyed. Then I just did a very simple hem. I rolled it up once and then rolled it up again. That's what you would call a rolled hem. And then the dress was finished. The dress is done. I have some thoughts and I have some feelings, but initially I do actually really like it. I think it's a really sweet design, quite nice to wear, but I think I'd made some big blunders when it came to fabric choice. I did not enjoy working with this fabric. It was probably my least favorite fabric I've ever worked with in my whole entire life. It was like very fray and stretchy and slippery. I think I got really persuaded by this color and the texture, but I just don't think that I was thinking with my sewing brain. So that is my fair warning to you if you want to recreate this. Maybe roll with something with no stretch, maybe something that irons well, and maybe something that isn't quite so delicate. My fabric has just pulled in so many places and I was doing my best with it. But you live and you learn and that is what it's all about. I think if I did it again, I'd do it just in a regular cotton and I think it would come out so much nicer. Anyway, it was so fun to try and replicate one of Cecile Barnson's designs. I definitely feel like I will try again with another one of her designs. I am fully obsessed. I think it's time to show you the finished product. That would be great. But before I do, let me say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you a lot. You're the best. I'll see you soon in the next video. And let me know what projects you're working on at the moment. I love knowing that. Okay, enough of that. Thank you. Goodbye. See you in the next video. Bye!